pain during surgery is something that most of our patients are fearful of. It's probably the most common reason why they don't want to have surgery, one of them being the scar, certainly. But the other thing is they're worried about how much it's going to hurt. And that's reasonable. There are a number of things you can do there. For some patients who've got a high anxiety, I have used Emla cream before the surgery. And I make sure it's a, not that I make sure it's a burden for the patient, but it is a burden for the patient. I make sure they understand that extra burden where they will have to come in initially, we'll mark out the tumour and the area we plan to excise, we'll stick the Emla cream on, and then they come back two hours later. So it needs at least an hour and a half for that to work. If the patient does that themselves, often they'll put the cream on the wrong place or they won't have gone wide enough. So sometimes they will do that, but it's not always in the right area for where I need the anaesthetic. So if they're happy to put up with the time inconvenience of coming in, doing some preoperative work, and then uh, coming back later for the surgery, that can be quite effective as a pre-anaesthetic issue. All of the time I buffer my anaesthetic with bicarbonate. Now, whether that ratio is one to 10 or even as high as one to three, uh, it does seem to make a difference. So having uh, bicarb to buffer the anaesthetic on all of my injections, whether it be for a biopsy, whether it be for an excision, I have found has made a difference for my patients. Having a very fine and a sharp needle is a very important part of it. So one problem can be if you're drawing up your anaesthetic, if you accidentally touch the side of the glass vial with the tip of the needle, it makes it go a little bit blunt, and sometimes it can even bend it a little bit. And that bluntness and bend can cause a lot more pain. So a very, very sharp needle pierces the skin very easily, is much more comfortable for the patient. So careful when drawing up the anaesthetic not to accidentally blunt the needle. I love ice packs. So after the surgery, I tell all of my patients, I want you using ice packs. And my simple instructions are 10 to 15 minutes every two to three hours for today and tomorrow. And I give them the same advice in writing. So it's part of my standard wound care instructions. I tell the people that um, this is gonna decrease your pain and decrease your bleeding. And if we decrease bleeding, that also decreases pain. A lot of wound pain can actually be from bleeding under the skin and bruising and swelling. And if we decrease that, their overall pain is decreased anyway. So I use a lot more emphasis on ice packs than I do on tablets for their post-operative pain. So in terms of uh, pre-operative or post-operative medications, there are some good studies showing that even simple things like paracetamol can decrease the patient's perceived pain. Now, most of these studies have actually been in other areas of medicine rather than skin cancer surgery. So whether it does truly relate to skin cancer is unknown. It probably does. So there's no harm in suggesting to a patient if they've got a high anxiety about the level of pain they might experience that they can then have preoperative paracetamol and have an expected decrease in pain as a consequence. Even if that is a placebo effect, it's a very safe placebo effect in most circumstances. In terms of post-operative pain, again, I emphasize the ice packs and the vast majority of my patients don't need any more than ice packs to control pain. And those that do need ice packs, more than ice packs, are often people who have actually had some bleeding under the wound and a hematoma forming. So I almost want to know about that scenario because that's warning me that there's something else going on. There's early complications developing uh, in terms of usually bleeding rather than an infection. So I, I'm not a, a big person for giving out a lot of opiates. I'm not even using a lot of paracetamol postoperatively because that can sometimes mask an early sign of complications. However, some people, with, especially with larger procedures, will have a fair bit of discomfort which the ice packs are not enough for, even though there's no complications. So for larger procedures, usually simple paracetamol is all I advise. Some people do require some opioids as well, so a, a panadine type medication. But I've generally avoided heavier doses of opioids uh, overall for my skin cancer surgery.